Hey guys, Gwyn here, and today is the first episode of a new survival series which is named The Magpie Realm. And I'm very sad to say that I recorded the entire episode and it just corrupted the entire footage. So there's no way I can get that back, so I'm just going to have to tell you guys what happened, what I got up to and then show you some new footage from later on. So, first things first, I will show you Foxy 7s view of the official intro, because he kindly allowed me to use his view of it. Hey guys, welcome to another video, and today we are starting a new series called The Magpie Realm with me, Gwyn, Gwyn, <laughs> wonderful potato and wonderful potato. Um, so we've got it's just a normal like SMP server thing, except we've got some data packs on, which Gwyn will now list for you. One of them being droppable heads, which I was just which someone kills me for. <laughs> I got him. Okay, right, list all the data packs. Yeah, Please. let's have a list. Please. So we have the armor statue book, which we each have, except someone has multiple of them because they I have the buttoned off. Oh, I didn't get anything from it, so I pressed it a couple of times to try and make so it work. So that allows you to edit armor stands, like I've done here with these. I got the book. Someone have another book. I I, I don't want to have loads, but I have the head. I got six. Okay, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> um, so you can see the Hi, and stuff. That, watch out, I want two and a half hearts. I want two hearts. Can you not keep giving me books? Okay, can I, can I have my... Can I have my... Oh, my... Excuse me. Okay, so we also have mob heads. So any mob you kill has a chance to drop its head. Wait for me. You have Seven. multiplayer sleep. So only one person needs to sleep and then it will change to daytime. I have my head back, please. Um, player head drops, as you've already seen. Whenever someone kills someone else, they get their head, and it says who killed them. <laughs> I now have two heads of Foxy Seven killed by one. Oh potato. my God, you murderer! And then There's there evidence as well. You can't get rid of that. It's saying who killed them. I have one. I have one. I want you can one. have one. You can have one. Can I come yes. yes. He stole it. He stole it. No, you didn't. It's over there. Behind you. Oh, I'm blind. <laughs> Why did they fly so far? Whee! And I have one more data pack to say, which is AFK display. Yeah, so it says if someone just stands there for a while. So then. if you've been standing in the same position, not moving at so all, if you go tab, for five minutes. If you press the tab button, you can see the different people, and if, yeah, for five yeah. minutes you don't move, your name then, will go grey. Yeah. And no one hit me because I'm already on two parts <laughs> and I do not want to die. Okay. So now that you've seen that, I'll get into what we did. So first, we built this starter base, which you see behind me. And I will give you a little tour of that in a second. And the other thing I did was I went mining. As you can see, I have half diamond armor, half not. I have a shield, diamond sword, some stuff like that, the usual. So, this is my starter base. I explored for a bit, found this lovely place with this strange little floating island and stuff. I thought this looked like a cool place to build my base because it's such a strange structure. It's got the lovely, all the flowers and the lovely waterfall. Um, I then have this base, which I guess you could say looks like a hobbit hole. But it's not quite. This is actually based off some the Icelandic buildings with turfed roofs, if you've ever heard of them. I searched up pictures of them online to base it off of them. And they're basically wooden houses with dirt and grass over their roofs. So they have turf roofs. So that's what this is based off of. It's just the grass, I've got all the flowers. I don't like having all the torches around, but 
it's a necessary thing because in that footage that's now got corrupted I was standing here a creeper blew up destroyed this whole half of the house and then came back out rebuilt the house as soon as I finished rebuilding it another creeper came blew it up again and so I had to rebuild it another time so I had to then light up the area inside it's very small you have a bed up there just chests going down to a mine furnaces crafting table is not really much in here but I can't really decorate it that much because it's so small and I actually need space for my items so from mining as I already said I got all these diamonds I also have everything in here, uh, lots of redstone, iron, yeah, obsidian, di more diamonds. I might as well craft this now. I saved it so that I could craft it with you guys because I only just recently got the resources for the book. That was the one thing holding me back. So there, an enchantment table. I don't actually have anywhere to place it down though, so I'll leave it in there. So then, as you see, I've just got lots of food. I've tried to keep these chests as organised as possible. As you can see, yeah. It's all pretty basic stuff at the start of a new series, new survival world. And then, as you can see, I have these pets here. I'll get to them in a bit because they're from the later footage. And head. So, going back to this, the premise of this series, it is a normal survival world. However, there are a few data packs. The intro was quite chaotic, so if you didn't understand what I was saying in the intro about data packs, because Foxy and Wonderful Potato were talking and being silly quite a lot, um, we have a couple of different data packs on here. All from the Vanilla Tweaks um, website by Azuma Void. So we have multiplayer sleep, so one person can sleep, and then it will turn to daytime. That's much use. That's very useful for when multiple people are online and someone can't sleep. Uh, we have player heads and mob heads. So when you kill a mob, there's a chance that it will drop its head, and when a player kills another player it will drop that player's head with and it will say who that player was killed by and then we also have the armor stand book which you saw in the chest here which means that when you're near an armor stand you can use this book to edit the armor stand give it arms make it invisible change the position stuff like that and that's basically it, except for an AFK um, data pack that allow means that when someone's been standing still for five minutes, their name goes grey, so you can tell that they're AFK. And that's about it. So next is what happened in the next piece of footage. So. First things first, in what I got to next, was I was starving. I had no way of getting any food. I was very low on hunger, and so I needed some way to get food quick. And so I went fishing. I then wanted a more permanent food source, so I was searching for some cows, because I could not find any around here. And I also needed the leather for books for an enchantment table. Whilst I was searching for cows, in the nearby uh, dark oak forest, I found a wandering trader. And since I don't really have any emeralds, and most of their trades are pretty bad anyway, I killed the wandering trader, tamed his llamas so that they won't despawn, and took his leads. I then used those leads to bring back some cows I'd found nearby and made a cow farm. I then went exploring for 
a village because I'd love to get mending as soon as possible and any more extreme hills biomes because Foxy and Wonderful Potato have set up their starter bases in the extreme hills biome near spawn and I know I want to build my main base in an extreme hills biome so I was searching for that as well. I came across a jungle which is awesome. I don't think I've ever actually found a jungle in survival before so that was really cool to come across and right next to the jungle there was an extreme hills which meant that I could search that for somewhere to build my base which I did and surprisingly there was the perfect area. It's got a lot of work I'm gonna have to do to turn it into what I want but it's got enough space and got some starts of mountains around it which helps out with the design I'm going for. I then found a village nearby because I was looking at the area that I wanted to build in and saw there was a spruce forest nearby and in that spruce forest there was a village. So that's great, it's right next to where I want to build my main base. And then at the village I tamed some cats as you can see here. I enslaved the villagers to protect them of course from the horrible zombie stuff that could kill them because I need villagers for mending and other projects. And then I fished a bit and found a saddle whilst fishing and then came back and on my way back tamed a horse so that it would be quicker travel back there. And then the final piece of footage I have is of just now because Wonderful Potato was actually online and he helped me out a bit because I was, I'll be honest with you, slightly lost trying to find my base again and I came across his base and while there he gave me an offer for a name tag. He'd said he didn't need the name tag, he wasn't going to use it so I could just have it if I wanted it and I hadn't realised he'd said this uh, until I was already on my way past his base so he came here and gave me a name tag which is just absolutely amazing thank you so very much that is so cool I've got to decide on a name for my horse but that's where this name tag, tag is going to be used most definitely so that's all I've got done so far so this is really the end of the video I'll see you in the next episode where hopefully I'll get my enchantment table going actually start breeding my cows. Okay and now inside hiding from the zombies because you saw what happened there um, and the other thing I want to do next episode is to try and get a mending villager. Just get one straight away so I can get mending and then won't have to worry about my tools and anything dying which is just so good. So Bye! I'll see you next time!